Want a shower that's easier to clean and easier to get into? I sure do. Interior designer Stacy McLennan shows us why you might want to consider a curbless shower. When our clients first approached us to create this large master ensuite, this area where I was standing was actually part of a large storage closet. So we took this half of the room and allocated it to the master ensuite and we ended up with this gorgeous, huge bathroom. They wanted it to be almost like a hotel, very contemporary with little hits of black to add that sharp contrast. The shower is an open shower area and the floor in this area is all gradually sloped down to the drain. So we actually didn't even have to have an enclosure for the shower. We just did this one simple fixed glass panel with the matte black finish that adds a little bit of a separation between the water closet area and the shower and also keeps the water contained. The freestanding tub is beautiful and again open to the shower area so really water is not an issue in this whole span. A recessed niche with some mirror at this back wall adds reflection and gives a little bit of decoration in this area. At this end of the bathroom, there used to be a door leading to the master bedroom. We've closed that door off and allocated this space for a shallow cabinet. It's only four inches deep inside, but is just enough to hold all of their medicine and bathroom accessories. To create the contemporary feel in this bathroom, we've used a sharp contrast of dark cabinetry with lighter countertops. This countertop is actually a man-made product, but it's made to look like a statue or marble. So you have the beauty of the marble looking material, but maintenance free, which is amazing. We chose to do a very high, deep countertop, so it gives that more clean, contemporary look. The mirror goes full height to the ceiling, and we've accented it with satin brass sconces and satin brass hardware, just to soften the look a little bit. The overall look is really contemporary, but then that satin brass just gives it that little bit of softness. Okay, that bathroom looks way more spacious than it really is. So Stacy's here now to show us some of the tricks to visually expand the space, because you did use a few tricks in there. Absolutely, now that bathroom is quite spacious, but there are some tricks that you can use if you don't have the space. So okay. here we have a large tile that we would want to continue right into the shower floor. And that will help the space feel larger because the finishes are not stopping and starting. So you have the continuous line. In order to do that though, you need to use a linear drain because typically you would have a drain in the center of the shower and yes. the tile has to slope down towards that drain. So you can't do that with a smaller or with a larger tile. You'd have to use a smaller tile. Okay. So by using a linear drain like these from ACO, we're able to use that large tile and continue it right through to the shower. And you locate the drain off to the end wall or the long wall so the floor is gradually sloped away from the door. Right, and that's why you're seeing all of these beautiful styles where you barely have a door now between the shower and anything else because everything's been slightly graded exactly. so that that water is always going to land where you want it to. Exactly. So you want to make sure that the drain is away from the shower door for right. sure because if someone drops a face cloth, you don't want the water pooling out into the area if you're not using a curb. That's right. There are some really great finishes in the, cur in the, uh, the shower Beautiful. drains, the linear shower drains with some great patterns. So I have some samples here, stainless steel, and even even now they have a smoked mirror. Oh, How gorgeous is that? That is beautiful, but know who you are because you're gonna get right. like fingerprints or what, toe prints? Right, toe prints. Right. So now yeah. the, the one thing is too, it's still a single drain and it's located in the center of this long linear drain. These come in different lengths, so okay. 27 up to 55 inches mm -hmm. and it even has a little hair strainer so you don't have to worry about hair going oh, down the drain. Oh, that's so good. Yeah, which is really good. Really nice. Okay, we've got a picture, don't we? We do, we have a picture of a linear top going right into the shower, the large tile with a curbless shower. That is so beautiful. Mm -hmm. I love that. Mm -hmm. Okay, what else do you use to sort of trick us into making the space look a little bit larger? Well, if you don't want to relocate your drain from the center of the shower mm -hmm. um, and you want to keep it in the center, then I would suggest using a smaller tile and mosaic so you can slope down to that center drain in the same color as your general bathroom tile. Right. So that, your again, your eye continues to go through so you don't have a, a stop and a start happening. What happens is the more your finishes change, the smaller the space feels. So if yeah. your shower is tiled totally separately and different from the rest of your bathroom, it's going to feel like its own little room and the bathroom will feel that much smaller. That's right. So you can find a lot of tiles that are in similar tones and use this in the shower mm -hmm. and then this would be your general floor tile. In order to do that, you the transition between the two tiles, you would use a curb and we have a photo of that as well okay. where you have a raised curb and I usually do the raised curb again in the same uh, similar tones so that it just blends in so your eye continues to go right through and okay. you always top off that curb with a piece of 
slab stone. You don't want to tile the top of it because you'll get water in the grout. Okay, very good point there. All right, let's talk a little bit about these right now because um, these are actually deceiving to the eye, the material they're made of. Exactly. So these are porcelain, but they look like a natural stone. Yeah. And we see a lot of these replicas now, which are gorgeous. And the nice thing is they're maintenance free, which mm. is great. You can get in a very large size and multiple sizes, 12 by 24. This size is a 24 by 24. But you can also get it in a smaller size. So again, you can use that in the shower to slope down towards the drain. Yeah. So you have the same tile, again, continuing right through into the shower. Um, if you like more of a mosaic look, mm -hmm. then we're really looking at usually natural stone. Natural stone tile is a little bit more susceptible to uh, what you're cleaning it with. So you want to make sure that you're using something that's not abrasive and it might have a little more maintenance, but it looks beautiful. And again, you can carry this smaller mosaic tile right into the shower area. We also love to do, when we're using small mosaic tiles, little inlays and things to give the space a bit of uh, more detail yeah. and also to feature areas like you're in front of your vanity or in front of your tub. So I brought a photo of that as well, of an installation we've done. And it is so gorgeous. I mean, you can have so much fun with just the way the tile is laid down. You can have a border. Absolutely. You can do the herringbone look. Like, it's, it's really lovely. It is. And it gives a little bit more interest. So if you're using this throughout the whole space, it's yeah. nice just to add another little detail just to make it feel that much more custom. Now let's talk a little bit about wall tiles. Yeah, so wall tiles, again, in the shower, I usually try and keep the finishes similar to what you're seeing on the walls. Yeah. But every once in a while, if the shower is a little bit more spacious, it's nice to create a feature wall. Yeah. So I have a photo here of a large tile that we've used as a focal point on the back of the shower. Beautiful. And we still kept the side walls neutral. So the shower still feels nice and spacious, but you've got some really dramatic uh, sight lines happening there. That is gorgeous. And then if you really have fun with pattern in your tile, <laughs> why not run it all the way up the wall? For sure. Got a gorgeous shot of that right there. That's beautiful. For sure. And again, um, using the same tile on the floor and up the wall, your eye just continues to follow the line. So it really does make the space feel a little bit larger. And even though we're using a lot of pattern in that image and dark wall colors, it still makes the bathroom feel larger because you have that continuous line of tile going up the wall. Before we go to break, I want to just make a quick shout out to the different grout out there. Um, and we can show that because this is really nice that you have all of these options that you can use in between your tiles. Absolutely. So usually when we're using a large tile, I like to do an accent grout just to showcase the size of the tile. Yeah. I wouldn't go necessarily stark white because that might be too harsh, yeah. but even something like this, so you have a bit of a contrast. That's beautiful. And you still get to see the size of the tile, and it's also a little bit easier to keep that color clean. Yes. Yeah. Think about the cleaning people <laughs> <For> always. <sure. laughs>